Good morning, everyone. Good to see you again. And this is part two of my exciting time with Rich Hake. And he had a trip that he's never going to forget to no. Sierra Leone, <laughs> and uh, we st which is a West African country. Right. If you didn't tune in, I hope you'll go on YouTube and watch it. But so your your role was to uh, well several roles, but the one that we're talking about a lot is the installation of and repair of wells, water wells. That's right. Which reminds us of this story, which you used in a talk to the folks, uh, of the woman at the well. That's kind of the title, if, if, you, if you know the Bible a little bit. In John chapter 4, Jesus meets a Samaritan woman at a well. And she's surprised that he would even talk to him. But So she asks for, for water, and, he, and Jesus says, everyone who drinks this water here will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst again. That's right. And because uh, because he has the living water. Absolutely. And so, Rich, how did that come into play for you? So, in the little village that we're in, uh, Takema is called, uh, it's a village of about 150 people. The well drilling rig had broken down because they lost the tool down in the well. Wow. And it had been broken down for five months. Meanwhile, we made plans to go there and rescue the bit, repair some other things, and so on. And so this became a spectator sport. There's no television. There might be a radio, <laughs> one per village, but that's we were the entertainment. Yes, well, you can just see that, what yeah. happened. So we had the, the local well drilling team and a couple of us old guys standing around trying to get everything set up to fish out this lost stool. And while we were there, a group assembled on the, the porch of the chief's hut watching us drill or trying to it see what we would do. It was within view? It was fairly close oh, yeah. by? Okay. Everything is very close. Okay. There's no street lights, stra yeah. roads to cross, nothing. So they're watching us, and a lot of these men were sitting there talking amongst themselves. And I said, you know, this reminds me of a story. And so I told this story. And this is a, a Muslim village, and we got a chance to talk about the woman at the well and the difference between the clean water that we'll be bringing, which is a vast improvement, and the water, the living water of Jesus Christ. And so in that, in that little enclosed porch, the group, I show a picture of it when it's small, but the group got bigger and bigger and bigger. And when they finally pulled the missing tool out of the well, and we'd finished the story, there was cheering about the bit that came out. Does that start the water? Is that then you can get water? Once, or you, do you... once you have the tool out, which is like an automated sledgehammer, then you can either finish the well or you clean it out so the water comes. Okay. So, so they're excited about that. They're excited about that. Everyone's cheering. And we, we gave an invitation at that point, which is usually reserved for when we open the well. But um, this was during Ramadan. So a number of people came and talked to us privately about accepting Christ that day. And then we went on to finish the well that afternoon. And, and of course, the crowd dispersed because what did they want to do? They're down collecting water from a swamp that I have a picture of. And it takes them a couple hours to hike it back to the village. I have a picture of us hiking so up. You are, you are so you are saving them the time down and back. So at we're least saving half the time. day. Yeah, saving them not. hours every day. And so they were running to get their buckets because they wanted to be the first one to get the new water out of the well. And uh, so we, we have a picture of that well once it was opened. And we moved on to another village. The interesting thing about this village is they had been hoping someone would come and, and drill a well for them. They had a cursed well. A uh, shaman had cursed it, and there was a number of things they didn't know what to do. But we went in and agreed to put in a new well. When you put in a well, they yes. also give you a meeting house. And oh. you can run a church and a school, something they've lacked for decades. That's fantastic. And during that time... There's a picture of us uh, talking with an elder in the village 
looking at this hole, which is basically a hole they dug for runoff where they can collect water. And he asked us, and they sang a song, which basically said, let those of us who don't believe in Jesus Christ believe in him now. And he asked if his village could accept Christ. I've never saw that before, but there is a story in Acts about that where right. someone is invited to accept Christ in their entire household. It was a Roman soldier, actually. Yeah. And it does say you will be saved and your family. And your family. I never understood that verse until I was standing in the middle of nowhere near Mokanji, Sierra Leone, and heard an entire village decide they wanted to make a choice from what they believed to, to become a Because Christian they had seen that followers of Christ are here to help us, give us our water. That, that just warms my heart. I mean, it's, it's just so awesome and warms my heart that you guys would do that. But it, I got to say, it, it doesn't shock me because I have seen in, in other cultures a lot of times decisions are made in a group. Yeah. And the group decides something. And it's not unheard of that they would decide as a group, no, let's follow Christ. It's really foreign to us Americans. It yeah. is. God looks at every person's heart, but every person is making that decision. So they, you know, it, it says, and I'm sure you, well, I'm sure you shared. Well, what did you share? with them. How did they? So, did he... so what I appreciate about going there, because I didn't really do hard ministry. I spoke in yeah. churches, but I didn't see a lot of response, a lot of fascination. Here's a guy from America who came to talk to us. But in the field, people care about your walk more than the talk. And so you're showing, you're demonstrating yeah. Christ's love. And that causes people to wonder, well, why or why not? And you had explained who Jesus is through this story of the woman at the well. Is that how? Uh, how we, did they know the difference? You had to tell when them. You go, no, when you go into a village, you scope out the area. I have a picture of the local health minister, who's Muslim, by the way, uh, Mohammed Khanna, and he designates where this well can go and where the building house can be built. And then the local official allows the Christians, those Christian yes. guys, to meet with the elders and the imam. I see. And so we explain what we're going to do for them in terms of the well, what they are going to do for their community in terms of building. And then our well drilling team, the, yeah. the local people, go set up the rig. Okay. And while they're setting it up, we meet with the elders and say, listen, we're, we want to tell you why we are here. I didn't come here just to give you a well. I came to tell you the living water about you could say Jesus, Esau yeah. Amasi, the the Christ, the living God, who came to to give us that's, the answer. That's yeah. it's it's just amazing, and I thank the Lord. I thank you guys for doing it. I mean, it's do you get to follow up, or is there anyone there? Well, we do. So one of the pictures that we have is of Joseph Mossere. He's a local pastor. And then the three, the three folks who yeah. came out, Mike the well driller, uh, Anthony uh, Fireman EMT, and me, the guy who fixes machinery. Yeah. Um, and and <laughs> we're on uh, an app on your phone, and we meet up with them pretty often That's... to find out. Well, I Huge just... ministry. Okay. Practical, makes a difference. People who get born again. Well, Rich, thank you so much. And I think that our practical applicant, you got to go halfway around the world, but folks, there's people right next door to us who also need to hear about the Lord. And it's a very simple thing just to invite them to church. If you come to Saddleback, invite them there or another church. They'll hear about Jesus. And so I think we're responsible for what's close by. Absolutely. You took care of what was out there. I hope you've enjoyed these last two days. I totally have. Thanks, Rich, for coming by and sharing <laughs> this you. with us. God bless.